is creeping onto the radar screen for the Carolina Panthers. A lot of people in the organization like Bryce Young. It comes down to who the owner likes. And I, Peter and I have argued about this, and I respect his opinion on everything. But I think he grossly underestimates the power of the owner. And the owner doesn't have to mandate anything to anyone. Because I think at one point he said, well, the owner's never going to say you must do this. No, that's the point. That's the benefit of being the owner. You don't have to say that. The people who work for you know that they better listen. And you see David Tepper there at all these pro day workouts. David Tepper's on the road for all these visits. David Tepper's involved. At some point, his preference is going to come out of his mouth. In some way, it will manifest itself, what he likes and what he wants. And you can have a situation where you have some who want to go one way, some who want to go the other. Which camp is David Tepper in? That's going to be key before that final decision is made at number one, Chris. Yeah, no, it, it is. Of course, he's going to have a say in this for sure. Now, listen, there, there's definitely, you know, your, your point's not wrong. You know, the owner, if he really makes it clear that he's going to want that guy or whatever, yeah, they're going to lean that way. But there are plenty of stories of – hey, the owner comes in and says this, and it's like way far off from where the organization wants, or, you know, the front office wants to go, and they can talk the owner off the ledge a little bit too. No, I'm just giving both sides of the story there. It would be interesting. We know no, Tepper. No, you're right. I'm not, you know, I, right. No, I know. Uh, you know, so Tepper's I, very involved, But you though, better be right. Know he's thirsty. If, right. if you talk, let me say this. Yeah. If you talk the owner off the ledge, That's right. you better be right about the guy you took because you're setting yourself up for years of I told you so right. if the owner ends up being right. Yeah, right. You're right. Well, yeah, I told you so as he's firing you. I told you so. See you later. Exactly. The next guy's coming in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, uh, this is going to be – I would think, again, this is C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young. They're by two – the two safest picks for sure, the two most ready-to-go NFL pocket passing quarterbacks in this draft they're ready right and then it just then it just break it down into yeah what what do you like what don't you like and then this the Bryce Young this is where the size thing comes into play a little bit I mean watching him listen he's got some plays and some releases and things where you just go wow I mean his feet his ability to make people miss is wow you know but what I say sometimes too Mike and what I say to that a little is you know some of those plays where I go, wow, I go, well, yeah, there's no defensive lineman within seven yards of him. And now he gets to see the guy come at him after he's been sitting there for four or five seconds. And then he makes a move. There was a lot of plays where I go, I don't know if that's realistic in the NFL. He's just, I don't know if that's going to happen. That's kind of what, you know, you know, and then CJ Stroud, on the other hand, is more of the traditional guy that way and more of what I would think Frank Reich would want a quarterback. But again, Bryce Young's special. It's 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 a not a great arm, but it's a good arm. But it's it's great in a lot of other areas as far as decision making, feel, quick releases, different releases, having a feel for the game, all of that. That's where Bryce Young is very special. And I don't know how at the end of the day you ever begin to make that final decision when you've got different factors. Yes. Yeah. The reality is the, the the biggest unknown is what happens when this guy is playing in the NFL. I, I, the best example I can remember is Deshaun Watson coming out of Clemson yeah. in 2017. Right. There were concerns about his interceptions. And, oh, the, the, the window is going to be even tighter at the next level. And if you're throwing a bunch of interceptions in college, it's going to be harder for you to thread the needle at the NFL level. But you know what? As the target shrunk, he got more accurate. Yeah, he did. You know, the bigger the target, right. you got a little more play. Target smaller, you got to thread the needle. And he did. You don't know that until the guy gets there. You don't know how that guy moves in relation to other NFL talent, the way Patrick Mahomes can stay just a step ahead of the guys who are chasing him. You don't know that right. until you drop him into that level of competition and see what he does. Every level of football, you hear it all the time. Oh, it's so much faster. It's so much faster. And that's the truth of the NFL. It's faster. It's bigger. It's stronger than college. And you either meet the moment or you don't. And there's no way to simulate it. There's no way to predict it. You just have to throw them in there yeah. and see what happens. Right. And that that's why the draft is ultimately a crapshoot. For all the time and the effort and the money that's spent, you just don't know. Yeah. And the chances are, chances are, one of these guys between Stroud and Young are going to figure it out, and the other one isn't. And somebody's going to get the guy who's the Peyton Manning, and somebody's going to get the guy who's the Ryan Leaf. There's a chance that's going to happen. Now, they both could be great. They both could be great. But there, there is a chance that one isn't going to be great, and there's a chance that both aren't going to be great. Just like Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold, number one and number three from five years ago. Yeah. We just won't know right. until we see them try to thrive and either 
succeed or fail at the NFL level. Yeah, you're right. It's a different game. It is. It's totally different. The NFL is defenses are more complex, like you talked about. The playing field's more even. You know, it's it's grown men who, yeah, there's no like we talk about all the time. There's no you know NCAA twenty hour rule. I don't kind of go to classes. It's football class all day long. Guys aren't out of position very often, right? So you know that's where I lean back into CJ Stroud because I go, I'm just gonna trust, you know. One, what I see and what my thought is projecting to the NFL in a close race like this, and I just don't I don't know if I could live myself with the smaller quarterback, especially if he got hurt, where I'm just gonna go, Oh my gosh, of course he got hurt. What was I thinking? You know? That's gonna be one of those too that, that could happen too. You draft him and he gets hurt and you go, Well, well of course he got hurt. He's hundred and eighty five pounds and he's playing quarterback in the NFL. And that you know, another thing that bothered me about his film, as quick and as awesome he is, but when he does get stuck in a spot where he's got to throw and then he gets hit as he's throwing, man, it's it's violent. I mean, he he can fly through the air. He can get hit like you go, Oh my gosh, that was a Mack truck and it wasn't even that aggressive of a shot. Those are the things that scare me a little bit about him. But man, he's a natural at the position. They both are. Stroud has to work on playing backyard football a little bit. But as far as throwing in the pocket and making big-time throws with people around him, Mike, he's as good as it gets in that department. But he needs that backyard element a little bit more like we talked about. Bryce Young, it's almost the exact vice versa, and it's going to just, yeah, Carolina is close. They're going to be – it's going to be nitpicky. I'm sure it's going to drive them crazy here a little bit the next few weeks. I think that 185 is even more concerning than the 510 or whatever he weighs. We know it's not 204. Right as his playing weight because he weighed in at the combine and didn't work out. And then when he did work out as pro day, he didn't weigh in. So he weighs something less than 200 pounds. And, and we look at, and again, this is where ownership becomes a factor. What are the current trends in the NFL? What are the, what are the things that become issues for teams? And it's Tua. Look at what the dolphins went through last year with Tua's concussions. For an owner of a football operation, a multi-billion dollar organization that saw what the Dolphins were dragged down by last year constantly, it was national news. Every time Tua had a concussion, it was a big deal. Do I want our team to be in the middle of that? Now, some owners do. Some owners like Jerry Jones view any publicity as good publicity. But some owners may not want that, and they may not want to have that risk. We're going to use this pick we traded up to get, and we're going to take the risk here of having a guy who could end up just like Tua. And, you know, is that a fair comparison? It's two different players altogether, but those comparisons get made all the time. Yeah, exactly. And again, it comes back to I told you. This guy's you so. smaller. It's like the OBJ right. risk. Yeah. Hey, the guy's had two torn ACLs. We, we, we signed him and he gets a torn ACL. We can't say we didn't know the risk. And yeah. so this guy's small. Like you said, he's smaller than Tua, and that's just part of what you have to factor in. If it was a year ago, it's not an issue. This year, it's an issue. And I just think that's another factor that whoever takes him, and we assume he's going to go no lower than two. We I assume know. it's going to be well, Stroud, Young, or Young, Stroud. Right. But either way, that's part of the risk. No, you're right. And, you know, Mike, and that's another part of the conversation I wanted to hit on, too. You know, on, on number two, right? Right? This is just, again, this is just food for thought. My knowledge, my thoughts, the people I know in the NFL. But let's just say C.J. Stroud goes one. You know, yeah, we all take for granted that Bryce Young's going number two to Houston Texans. You know, it, it, I, I guess so. I just, I guess here's a part of me that I just want to throw you know, caution to the wind a little bit. Like Nick Casario, when I was working in New England and he was there, and you heard me ask Josh McDaniels this when we were at the Combine, right? I mean, quarterback like Bryce Young would not even be on the radar 10 years ago in New England. They would have gone, nope, we, he does not meet our measurable satisfactions in a bunch of areas. He's off the board for us. You know, now I know the game is adjusted. We know that. But, you know, as we've talked about, there's still a baseline of teams out there that are like, ah, I would never do the small quarterback thing. I'm like that. If I was involved in a team, I, I just wouldn't – I would err on the bigger guy in that department. But I do wonder, you know, and again, when you have a pick at number 12, you know, you could – do something else at two, draft Jalen Carter, draft a, an edge pass rusher or whatever, and then at 12, maybe trade up and get somebody else too. I feel like that scenario has not been thrown out there, and it's just something I think about. And again, I don't know how much Nick Casario's thoughts have changed in that department, but I know that I used to have a scouting sheet that used to have the checklist for each position, and the one that was for quarterback, Bryce Young wouldn't check off any of them. 
So that's where I do just wonder those possibilities. Just throwing it out there, Mike. I don't know that. I'm just throwing you're talking it out. about yeah. you're talking about the Casario scouting sheet, right? Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.